Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you doing? Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, MG, let's see. I need to turn on my camera. Let's yeah. see how we do that. Let's I'm sitting it. in a boring white room. There's not really much going on behind me. Wow, your beard game is strong. Oh, check that out. Woohoo. Wow. <laughs> So how have you been? Oh, I was about ready to ask you the same question. Oh my goodness, it's been ages. Uh, fantastic. Well, where do we catch up with each other? I mean, there's so many places to start. I know. I think the last time I saw you is you had a booth at TNC in 2018. Yes. Yeah. So it was, so it's been two years since I've seen. You. Pretty yep, much. Yep. 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 Uh, so uh, just the, the quick recap is, uh, you know, there was some uh, fires in California not too uh, long ago, about a year and a half ago. Yep. And uh, as, uh, as luck and fate would have it, we lost our home in Malibu. So, wow. we, okay. yeah, I know, it was, a, it was a big deal. So what we did is we uh, looked around for, and of course, we're going to rebuild there, uh, but it's a long process to rebuild, and it's going to take a while. And, and while, that we're, while that's all in play, we decided to go uh, hunker down somewhere else to sort of, uh, uh, you know, put our stake in the ground in a new place. And uh, we were considering buying a, a second home, kind of a vacation home out next to Disney World. So we just pulled the trigger and said, let's just go buy that house and live in it for a while. So we're living in Orlando, Florida, right uh, next to Disney World, which, uh, of course, during the pandemic at the moment is closed. But uh, they're going to reopen that eventually. Okay. And then uh, when, things, uh, when things get settled with the rebuild of our home in California, we'll head back out there. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so that, that explains the uh, EST time zone. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's like, it's like uh, interesting. Cool. <laughs> well, uh, I want to welcome you to Money Marketing Mindset, which is the podcast for the small business community. Fantastic. And um, you're one of, uh, one of my first uh, sets of interviews. Awesome. And to just give you a little bit of background, so what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks is just going through what are all the ways to make money with Amazon? And always, whenever Amazon comes up, I mean, I immediately think of you. Always. <laughs> it's just like, You're too kind. Thank you. Yeah. They should, you should, Amazon and then right, George Lawrence is like right underneath there. Well, that's their tagline. Um, but I've been I'm exploring all the different ways to make money um, using Amazon, right? Yep. And so, you know, uh, you have experience, I have experience um, doing it many different ways. I've brought clients on. Um, doing uh retail that that's how we sold all of the shoes that were out of season at shoe thrill yep yeah um so you you you'll enjoy this for the last couple of weeks i took a job as a picker in one of the uh, oh, fulfillment wow. warehouses here in um phoenix you know i gotta i gotta confess to you i've always wanted to do that to see what it's like tell me give me the give me the, the quick lowdown what was it like um it gave me a really huge perspective on like how Amazon, you know, is growing so fast and stuff like that and how they're um, crowdsourcing everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I get to feel, I know what it's like to feel it be a robot. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it was the easiest job ever to get, uh -huh. right? You just go online, fill out a survey, right? Answer the questions correctly. They go, okay. And then they call you, you know, to make sure that you can actually speak. Mm -hmm. um, and then they say, show up at this particular place at this particular time. And I think that's just to see if you're breathing. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, and then they give you this card, like, this is your paycheck. You can get access to your first week's pay before you even start, you know, X, blah, 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 blah. Right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then they're like, show up on this day. So, and then now this is all during the pandemic. So it's a little different, right? Right. Um, everybody's wearing masks. Masks are mandatory. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think at my facility, they've had uh, four confirmed cases of COVID. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Um, Houston, I think, is the worst. If you go on Reddit, there's actually a spreadsheet. They're keeping track of all that stuff. Oh, right. Um, but yeah, so 15 minutes of training. You walk in. Okay. They're like, you kind of get assigned what your job's going to be as you walk in. 
um, and then they take you over and then they give you a little scanner gun and then you know you're with like five or six people and then they walk you through how to use the scanner gun and then you're off to the races they give and you a little cart what, what yeah. i'm dying to know is you know i go into a grocery store or whatever and i can't even find my way around uh, I, I don't even know where like where the dairy aisle is right and so but well, the point is if you turn me loose in one of those things and said go find the iphone cases i'd be like duh, 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 duh. how do you find your way around that massive labyrinth so okay so the the place is huge uh -huh. um on an average shift I, were, I walk about 14 miles dang wow this is fascinating right so i'm averaging about 50 miles a week in walking uh -huh. so i'm keeping track because i got a little fitbit yeah yeah um and the the place is massive massive right and it's right, three right. stories and um they have a a little addressing system right hmm. and what's interesting is that everything's set up in bins right so yep. aisles and bins so you have section floors sections aisles bins right um a is at the bottom and it'll go all the way up to like um j or you know j or k is yeah. the highest will go top to bottom and then in a bin it's like all kinds of different stuff right mm -hmm. so it's not like bin is, this bin is all xbox games no in the bin might be a bra um uh toothpaste an xbox game and uh like a, a mouse right right i mean just all kinds of weird well, stuff it right? sounds like all of life's essentials in one bin <laughs> right well but see the thing is is in the bin there's usually about 20 you know 15 to 20 items um all kinds of different stuff and the majority of the stuff i seem to pull is apparel yeah uh, the weirdest thing i pulled was uh, a vibrator Right. So it was, sure. like, it was a vibrator, then some fuzzy handcuffs, and then like a dog collar. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, okay, this is interesting. Yeah, we, um, from time to time, we get requests to, uh, you know, help optimize listings in the sexual wellness category. And of course, you know, it, products are products, so we have yeah. no problem with that. But every now and then, you know, you're, you're delving into an aspect of a product that you're just like, wow, I didn't even know this existed, but okay. Yeah, exactly. And, and that, that was the other thing that's cool is to, to see all the stuff that's sold. Yeah. Um, but you know, basically all you have to do is once you know the addressing system, right? Mm -hmm. So P1, 2, and 3 is what floor. And then there's like um three sections. They're divided by these conveyor belts, and you just get a cart, uh, put a bin on the cart, and then you scan it, and then look at the scanner, and the scanner tells you where to go. And mm -hmm. um, there's a thing called Amazon Pace, right? So there's this little countdown bar that's slowly disappearing and that's the amount of time that you have to get to that item and scan it interesting right wow. um so you're at a clip you, you you cannot like dilly dally right? Right, right they want you to be picking about 80 items an hour wow right and in that calculation is your downtime as well so when you're on break and lunch that's counting right. against you yeah, yeah. Right. So you really need to be picking um, around 200 items in between your breaks. So yeah. when you're actually on the floor working, um, you got to you got to be hustling. Right. Um, now, my first couple days, I, w I felt like I had to like freaking run. Right. Right. To right. meet that measure. Um, now, after a couple of weeks, once I got the whole um, thing down as far as where to go. Um, it's just I just automatically know where the bin is and how far down the aisle it's going to be based off of you know the, the how things are set up right so it's just I think the the speed of picking is really getting to the location as quickly right. as possible in the least amount of steps right so you're not backtracking and go oh I went down the wrong aisle and not paying attention stuff like does that. does the algorithm or you know however the system works does it at all optimize for you does it like does it give it to you in the order that would plan an efficient route well, you know, I haven't figured that part out yet as far as how it's, it seems like there's, there's definitely a method to the madness for sure. Um, from my perspective, sometimes there's been a couple of times where I'm in one corner of the warehouse, it says, go get this item and it says close out the tote, which means you got to put it on the conveyor belt and then it gives you a new item to go. So you only put in one item in one tote right. and then tells you to go back down to the first floor, you go from the far end of the corner for the third floor all the way down picking some 
like two or three pairs of shoes on the first floor <laughs> and then sending you somewhere back and you like in, in, you're walking like 20 minutes and you just pick three items right, right, um, right. and so that gets kind of weird that way um the other thing too is i think that they um they do segment between shoes and regular items your pick rate goes way down when you're picking shoes oh, interesting. um because you can only fit so many shoes in one tote right right right, right? so it's like back and forth back and forth um and then sometimes there's like you get into an aisle and it's just like boom 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 you're like you're, you're never leaving the aisle and next thing you know you've picked 100 items out of that aisle putting them into these totes and you throw the totes on and then they just go down the the uh, conveyor belt and then from there they're going to get um packed every once in a while i'll get a message from some somebody that says the next the next nine items are critical please pick them and get them on the um drop the tote as quick close out the tote as quickly as possible hmm. um so and and sometimes it seems like you know the stuff i'm picking is for the same person like i told you like the one with the handcuffs thing yeah, yeah yeah um it was obviously all for the same person um at least from my perspective um but then there's other stuff is just like if this is one person ordering this stuff man they're buying some random stuff right um, right, right but it, you, uh, know, hey, hey, uh, you know forgive me for monopolizing your time and, no they're uh, fine if, if you don't mind answering these questions these are fascinating but is it a one-to-one -one correspondence one tote equals one person's order or, <laughs> yeah. or do many orders wind up in one tote i i suspect that many orders end up in one tote right yeah. and so there's like a bulking aspect of like because it's up to me on um, when to close out a tote well actually the system will tell me to close out a tote or i choose when to close out a tote and you have to close out a tote when it becomes to the point where you can't stack it right right, right. so or i think it gets too heavy i think there's an aspect of that it knows relative bulk size of the items and then weight because I've, I've, I've kind of picked up on, on the aspect of like, I've only done a couple items and then I'm not ready to close the tote because I know I can get more stuff in it, right? And the more I can just put in one tote, the better my pick rate is. Because yeah, yeah. it takes time to drop the tote and, I can, and you can carry three totes. At, max totes you can carry at any time on your cart is three. Because um, it takes time to go drop the tote off. Yeah, sure. Um, so, it does seem to because sometimes i put heavier stuff in and it'll close up the tote and i'm like okay we're getting close to like you know 20 20 30 pounds in that tote so i can yeah. i get it um but yeah you know i mean my first day there i didn't see anybody for hours and and you'll be starting a shift with like 200 people right yeah and then you'll go a couple hours never seeing anybody that's just giving you how huge that place is Right, right and they're 24 7. um and then there's a whole group of so i'm a i'm outbound picking so they have inbound stowing right mm -hmm. so yep. there's people in there their job is to just put stuff in bins and your job is to take stuff out of bins yep. um it's uh it's fascinating um mm -hmm. d have no idea who's in charge um you know if, if somebody's coming oh. to talk to me management's talking to me they're the, ro the robots <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, it's just like, I'll, I'll, I'll be like doing my thing and I'll start turn around and they're like, Hey rich. And I'm like, Whoa, where'd you come from? And then they're like, you were three minutes late uh, from your last break. Cause you get 20 minutes from scan to scan. So when you get your two 15 minute breaks, you get 20 minutes from scan to scan. So you could be on the other side of the warehouse, scan your items, time for your break, walk all the way to the break room and then walk all the way back. You have 20 minutes to get there so if you're like two minutes late they're like why are you two minutes late right all right but the 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 interesting thing is it's like they don't call you down go do go somewhere no they come to you and they know exactly where you are at any given time right right Like so that it, that's kind of like once you get kind of used to it you're like when you see somebody you're like okay so and they're not pushing a cart you're like okay i'm in trouble or there's some some administrative thing that's going on so it's interesting Weird. Weird. Well, give me the bottom line. After having experienced it, someone like me who's curious about it, uh, you know, trying it or whatever, would you say, sure, it's a fun thing to do. Well, why not? You don't like it. You don't have to keep going. Or would you say, no, learn from my mistakes. Never try it again. It's awful. I, I you know, it, it, especially if you want to get in shape. 
uh -huh. it would be a great way to be incentivized to get in shape. Um, I look at it as kind of like a video game. Oh, yeah. Um, right, because you got the little timer and just like how quickly can you be and you can always look at your performance and stuff like that. So that's fun. Yeah. Um, but they only pay 15 bucks an hour. Right, right. Right. And so the biggest thing I have to deal with when I'm doing it and it's a 10 hour shift, right? Oh, dang. Yeah. So four tenths. Right. So it's not like you show up for a couple hours and then you're out. No, right. you're, in like for, you know. you're in for 10 hours. Right. Um, so my biggest thing is it's like, I know my time, how much my time is valuable yeah. or how much value my time is and stuff like that. So I'm just like, ah, this is the hardest thing for me to be there working for 15 bucks an hour doing that. Um, I just keep reminding myself, well, I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn, lose some weight, uh, get in shape. Um, and just have an experience to be able to have like, you know, a good, you know, backstory for sure. Yeah. Well, and you don't have to tell anybody the details. You can always say, well, back when I was working at Amazon or as yeah. a former employee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, um, I, you know, I always kind of imagine what it would look like uh, and be like, but actually seeing it was actually awe inspiring. And right. it just wow. like, and in Phoenix, there's seven of those warehouses, yeah. seven. Now, what's interesting is another friend of mine, he started picking um, in Dallas, same time. And their warehouse is different. So rather than him getting a cart, putting his bins, and then going and putting the totes and going finding the bins, he actually has a picking station hmm. and the bins come to him. Interesting. So the bins are, so basically the shelves are all like on these robots. And then the right, robot right. It just shuffles around. It looks it reminds me of like a board matrix reconfiguring itself. Is that like from the right. videos I've seen? Right, sure, sure. But he's just standing in one position and then the bin comes up and it tells him what which one to pull and stuff like that. So it's pretty fascinating. Yeah, dang it. Well, that's interesting. Thanks for sharing all that. Yeah, you're welcome. So, um, yeah, so once again, welcome to Thank Money you. Marketing Mindset. And um, yeah, so I wanted to talk to you about merchant words. Well, you know, couple things just want to catch up with you because I remember when I met you the first time I met you um, we were with Gina and Richard they were doing like an Amazon um, kind of little conference thing in this back mall room yep, yep. Um, I talked about automation and you were talking about um, merchant words and stuff like that and the thing that I caught on with you because we have both have dev backgrounds is that you had you had the whole you were looking at the matrix aspect of all of the um, stuff that was going over the wire as far as the wireless and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, yeah. this guy, I like this guy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, how, so tell me, um, you know, Merchant Words is basically the original Amazon keyword tool, right? And anybody that knows about search engine optimization and stuff like keywords are key. That's what I call them keywords, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, to you know having your stuff kind of show up so um why did you create this keyword research tool for mission words well like a lot of great origin stories i was basically scratching my own itch you know it came about as something i needed and uh, you know may maybe the folks listening uh, to your podcast right now uh, you know will kind of resonate with this story and that is i had a i had a great job you know i had a great life by all measures you know kids uh, were and you know the whole whole thing is i'm living the american dream as they say but i never felt like i was able to get ahead you know i was always just getting by and so to try to, to try to get ahead, what I was doing is doing side hustles anywhere I could. And one of my side hustles was selling, you know, selling product, uh, moving some product on eBay and then later on Amazon. And I'm thinking, you know, look, I'm, I'm a computer programmer. I'm a dev guy. I should be able to like figure out a way to do this a little more efficiently, a little better, uh, you know, kind of get a leg up on other sellers and things. And then I realized if I could just figure out what people are shopping for, not necessarily what they're buying, but what they're searching for when they shop, then I can be like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna necessarily switch what I'm selling, but I can switch how I'm marketing what I'm selling. And if I can describe it exactly how people are searching for it, then I'll get better position in the Amazon search uh, result pages and I'll get better resin and never mind the Amazon algorithm. Uh, even if I've got the same positioning, just the fact that my product is described in the same way that 
sellers are looking for, I'm going to resonate better with, you know, their philosophy or their personality. And, you know, I'll get the, the clicks and I'll get dumped into the cart more. So that was my theory. And I, I figured, you know, if I could just figure out, write, write, write some code that goes observe what's happening on Amazon, maybe I could figure this out. And, you know, the, the, before I met you, the early versions of Merchant Words, it wasn't called Merchant Words at all. I, I didn't give it a name. I wasn't charging money for it. It wasn't a business. It was just my own little experiment. Yeah. And so I'd write some scripts and it would run in and observe some data and, you know, put the results of that observation in a database. And I would start looking through this database to see how people are describing their products when they search. I'm like, whoa, you know, there's a lot of sellers out there missing out on understanding how people think. Right. And so, of course, I improved the way I marketed my products and I saw Lyft. I shared it with some seller buddies of mine. They saw the same Lyft. They're like, dude, this is awesome. You should like turn this into a business and have this be your hustle. And right. uh, so for a while it was my side hustle and then one thing leads to another and it became my day job and, you know, I haven't looked back since. So that's kind of the, the, the short answer is I was scratching my own itch to try to be a better seller. And now thankfully I'm happy to report that we're able to help other sellers be better sellers too. Yeah. It, it, it's one of those keys. Um, always like looking at what, what it is that you're trying to tackle. Mm -hmm. And um, it so resonates because um, I was a gold farmer. Well, actually before I was a gold farmer, uh, there's a game called Ultima Online, right? Uh -huh, yeah. And I wanted to play the game and then be able to sell my account um, after like six months. So, so I was waiting for my daughter to be born. The, you know, everything was set. House is good and the family's good, all this stuff. I was kind of bored. I'm like, oh, I'm going to play this game again, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it in a way that once she's born, I'm going to quit. And then I'm going to sell my, sell my account for all the money that I've ever paid for the, playing the game, which was about like 400 bucks. Right, right. So and I'm like, okay, well, if I'm gonna do that, what do people buy? And so I looked on eBay and I started like researching it. Um, and then I found that, oh, people buy gold. Oh, so I'll just play make the gold. But then I'm like, there's no way that I can make that amount of gold um, in playing this amount of time. So there's something I'm missing here because they're selling a lot of gold and people are making a lot of money doing the gold. And I ended up writing a program as well um, to scrape <laughs> auction results right and start to figure out um you know why the price of gold when it goes up when it goes down stuff like that but more importantly who are the main who are the main sellers right yeah. and then i ended up learning learning what was actually really going on with the game and then wrote a program to play the game 24 hours a day seven days a week and then generate or that take all that money that I'm, the gold i was getting in the game then i offered it up to those main sellers right so obviously the people like really crunching it and, and killing it as far as they need they need volume they need people to give them gold where are they getting it and i can make a lot of it and so i just basically reach out to them and go hey i can always provide you gold and um this is how much i want you know per million as far as the gold goes and then that turned into a side hustle of making about 20k a month nice freaking awesome right um but so i can totally get where you you took that side hustle to a whole nother level and actually made it into a legit business which is freaking awesome and that's what i always tell everybody is like you should have a side hustle and then at some point that side hustles you know, you know launch into something bigger so now it's what been almost a decade almost so, yeah. yeah and so you know these these kind of the side hustle days began right at the beginning of the just after 2010 you mm -hmm. know so 2011 2012 in that that area and then uh, you know when we finally formally launched it as a real company that was around the 2012 2013 time frame. right yeah then that's uh, about know, when i met you yeah uh-huh yeah and it's fun to look back you know we still have a handful of customers that have been our customers since 2013. okay and I'm thinking, you know wow there's going to be a time in a couple of years coming up where we're going to have to maybe send one of those early customers an award you know thanks for being a 10-year customer of merchant Works. right yeah so yeah. how how has amazon changed how has merchant word changed since you created your original tool well, you know, that's uh, and the real question is how is it continuing to change because it always changes, right? No, no, right. Nothing ever stops changing. And that 
actually was one of the surprising things is, you know, when you observe, uh, like, you know, because you were telling me you wrote some scripts and talk to another system, right, and perform some actions on another system. Right. Uh, and, don't and, and they don't want you doing that. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the interesting thing is Merchant Words is all about observing what's happening on Amazon. It's not like we try to influence or spam anything or, or make right. a change. There's a lot of black hat utilities that try to do uh, things with Amazon that they don't want and it's against the terms of service. Or whatnot. We don't do any of that kind of stuff. We're an right. observe, uh, observational tool, but it's amazing what you can learn by simply observing. Right. You know, you, you always see someone like in a in a high powered conference room. You know, there's a guy silently in the corner taking notes and thinking, and you're like, wow, there's something deep going on in there. Whatever that guy's thinking about. Yeah, right. You can learn a lot by listening. Uh, but anyway, the point is, when we first launched Merchant Words, it was just me, you know, a single guy writing all the code. When I first launched Merchant Words, I figured that you know we just um, have this code that observes what's going on on each page and then that's it. I can now turn my focus on data science and analyzing what we've collected and, and you know, looking at some of the other patterns that we kind of see. But what I found out was a full-time job really to continue to uh, uh, kind of mirror the changes that Amazon's making. So they're constantly tinkering and you know, you hear this everywhere, but they're constantly tinkering with everything. Uh, you know, this button used to go here. Now that button goes there. This HTML used to look like that. And now the HTML looks like this. You know, the UI of this page used to have that. Then now the UI of this has to have that. And then they're, they're continuously changing. But what really surprised me isn't so much the rate of change and the, the, like the unrelenting fact that change is always happening. It's that there's multiple changes happening simultaneously. So in this category, we observe some changes. In that category, we observe different kinds of changes. In this other category or this other market. So in, in the UK market, this thing might be happening. And in the uh, other market, those things might be happening. But in the category of shoes in UK, this ha it's, it's mind blowing, right? I mean, we only discover these things when we look back on them. So I've had our data science team, uh, you know, once we grew into a real company and hired employees and, and created a data science team, then the, the interesting experiments really began because then I can ask the data science team and go back and take a look and say, what can we learn? from these changes? What can we learn from these patterns that we're observing? And you know, wow, we gather deep insights. Of course, our, our job is to, to make that, uh, just like Google says, and make that useful, right? Organize, right. The, organize Amazon's information and make it useful for the world. Uh, and so that's what we endeavor to do is, uh, is uh, you know, as we build the different features of Merchant Words is, is bring that knowledge to the rest of the world so all of us sellers can understand what's happening. But to answer your question, uh, you know, what doesn't change in Amazon really? It's everything changes and it changes all the time. And it's fascinating to be on the cutting edge of watching these changes happen and then being able to, to get insights and, and learn from the patterns of change by looking back at what's been going on recently. It's fascinating stuff. Cool. So, you know, Merchant Words is like when anybody ever asks me, and I already know this to be true, which is that Merchant Word is the best tool to do product research and search optimization, right? So how, and you talked about the, the data that you collect and then you have the data science team, you know, kind of like say, well, what does it all mean? Well, how do you collect the data in the first place? A uh, great question. And, uh, you, you know, uh, I, maybe I shouldn't say this or maybe I should, but you know, I want to be totally transparent. Merchant Words observes what's happening on Amazon, just like you can observe what's happening on Amazon. It's not like we have some super secret backdoor connection or some black hat approach or whatever. Uh, and so when, when uh, you or anyone else goes to Amazon, you'll typically start typing into the search bar. And then you'll probably notice that a lot of suggestions come flying down with each keystroke. And so if you're going to search for iPhone case, you hit I P H O N E and all these different suggestions keep rolling down each time. Well, you know, there's interesting patterns to be observed there. And then when you finally click on something, whether you type it all the way to the very end and then click enter, or whether you see something and arrow down to it and click on it, uh, then you'll wind up on a search result page. And on that search result page, your eye will scan up and down. And you'll see all kinds of different products. Some are exactly what you were, uh, what you wanted. Some are exactly what you wanted and that necessarily wasn't what you typed. Sometimes it's exactly what you wanted because you typed those words. But either way, you find what you want. You go to the detail page. You look around on the detail page, all kinds of content there. And then you may move on to something else or drop it in your cart. And, and it's those interactions that we observe and we learn from. And so to answer your question, uh, really, it's just Amazon and full stop period that's all we get our data from is amazon but we look at amazon in the same way that you look at amazon now now here's the difference is you know we can observe 
hundreds and thousands and millions of these kinds of interactions that I was mentioning, you know, what pops down on the suggestion and what uh, mm -hmm. comes on the search result page or whatever. And if you were to do that, it would take you days or weeks or months. And honestly, you get tired of doing it. And then what's worse is you wouldn't want to compile out where you're going to put all that in a spreadsheet and then type in everything you learned. Now, if, if you really only are researching a couple of products, and if you really only have a quick question about a few quick things, then by all means, just jump into Amazon and take a look, see what you see. Uh, see what suggestions comes down because Amazon will tell you right there, right on the suggestion right. list, what's up with what. Uh, you know, one of the examples I like to use is, hey, I bet intuitively you can tell me that iPhone cases are more popular on Amazon than Igloo coolers. And you'd probably be right, but I can prove it to you by hitting just the letter I in the suggestion in the search bar right. and seeing iPhone cases come down. Why didn't Igloo coolers pop down? They start with I too. Well, right. from that, you can conclude that iPhone cases are more popular than Igloo coolers. And sure enough, if you hit a G, IG, then now iPhone cases don't match, but Igloo coolers match, and boom, they pop up, right. and right. so on and so on. And so you can determine what's more popular than what else is more popular yourself. However, when you can do it at scale, and you can do it consistently, and then learn from the patterns with a data science team, even better. Yep. I mean, that, that's what I'm experiencing picking, is I, I have an idea. I know one of the things, one of the items that I pick a lot is iPhone cases. Right, sure. And masks. Now, a lot of masks lately. Yeah, I, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so now you've been doing it for 10 years and you, and really I've seen the, uh, the evolution of, of merchant words and it's really awesome. Like the, the level of analysis and the data that you provide as far as making sense of everything. I mean, we have like velocity and all this stuff, but what I'm curious is how much, attention have you garnered from Amazon directly? So are, have they been like reaching out to you? Do you guys like have a relationship or they're like, are they, when are they going to buy you? You know, that kind of stuff. Well, you know, it, it's interesting that um, I don't think Amazon would necessarily ever be interested in buying us per se, because we've made a business of helping other sellers understand in a transparent way what's happening inside of Amazon. Right. And as you and as you know, I mean, you've had a peek behind the curtain a little bit. You kind of understand the way Amazon works in, in their DNA. Uh, you know, Amazon already understands, you can imagine, pretty well what's happening inside their organization. Yeah. And so we built a business of letting others understand what's happening inside their organization. And so really, I don't anticipate Amazon ever wanting to come purchase us. Right. Uh, although what is interesting is I have, I have had a handful of interactions with uh, official Amazon representatives, you know, folks from different branches of the company. Uh, the most, well, they're, they're all, they've all been friendly and pleasurable, yeah. right? But, but uh, the, the, one, the first one was the one that kind of stands out the most. And that was, uh, I, I was face to face with the search quality team. And, uh, and first of all, I'm like, wow, that's great that there are people, full-time jobs worried about the search quality. So awesome. Good for you guys. Uh, and the other thing is like, there's a whole team of them. That's just, that's just amazing. Yeah. So, well, fantastic. And so I'm like, well, great. Uh, wh while we're here with this face-to-face -face meeting, um, hey, tell me how the algorithm works. How can I, blah, blah, blah. and then, like, you know, ha, 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 right? But, right, but they right. said, no, no, the purpose that we're here and the reason we wanted to talk to you is we heard of your tool, Merchant Words, and we kind of like uh, uh, understand that you're suggesting keywords that sellers use. Uh, our full-time job is to stop or prohibit, uh, prevent keyword stuffing. You know, right. we don't want people to stuff keywords. And we were concerned that perhaps your tool was assisting people or encouraging people to do keyword stuffing. And I explained like, look, no, 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 not, not only uh, would I never suggest that, but we're the whole purpose of our tool is the exact opposite is to help un people understand the proper and relevant keywords that people are using when they search so that sellers can use the opposite of keyword stuffing and use the best, most resonant, most uh, matching what's inside people's heads when they're turning around and, and listing their products on Amazon. And so they kind of understood the whole goal, the whole vibe, the whole purpose of Merchant Words. And they're like, okay, we're fine with that. Carry That's on because cool. because you're you're helping us do our job. You're doing the exact same thing that we want to do. And right. so yeah. very friendly. And then from time to time, Amazon will reach out and say, hey, I'm from the advertising team. Would you guys like to advertise uh, inside of Amazon somewhere? I'm like, oh, okay, maybe. That's interesting. Never, never, uh, never thought that you guys would want me to be advertising inside of your platform, but it makes sense. Thank you. And, and uh, other reasons like that. Uh, my... The, the one that makes me the proudest, though, is uh, an Amazon brand rep 
was chatting with their brand and uh, they were going over the products and everything. And then the brand rep called me up later and they said, uh, Hey, I was talking to my brand about, you know, helping them optimize their positioning on Amazon or whatever. And they said that they get uh, all of their uh, positioning data and everything they need to help understand their brand inside of Amazon from you guys. And so uh, what's merchant words. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of cool. I'm like, Oh, Hey, we got, we got a props from a, from a big brand and their brand manager inside of Amazon wanted to know more about merchant words. I'm like, hey, that was right. kind of, kind of like an attaboy pat on the back, you know, that's awesome. So that was nice. So if you could go back, um, to the beginning, what, what are like one or two things that you would, if you could go back to your old self, mm -hmm. taking everything you know right now and go back and go, all right, here's three things that I want to make sure that you keep in mind. What would those three things be? What would you go, What would you tell yourself? That's a great question. And uh, for the other folks listening, I would I would say that the th the three things I'm, I would have I would tell myself are the three things I would encourage you to pretend your future self just visited you from the future and told you today because uh, they're they're not like super specific. It's not like buy this stock or bet on this racehorse or whatever. It's it's more like philosophical things. Is I wish I had told myself. And so take this opportunity to imagine that the, what I'm going to say is uh, from your future self telling you right now today, and that is uh, don't wait. It's not so much start faster. It's uh, don't. Don't wait until you feel like you've figured it, everything out. Don't wait until you understand all the, the business creation laws. Should I start an LLC or a corporation or whatever? It's like, yeah, yeah okay. You shouldn't necessarily make any startup mistakes. Don't, don't purposely rush in so fast that you've made a mistake, but don't wait because with this whole analysis paralysis, you could spend all day long reading self-help books and, and like business startup books and entrepreneurial books. Like just get out there, you jump in your go-kart and jump into the race and start making some mistakes, bump into the tires and realize that, uh, you know, you'll, you'll figure it out as you go. So uh, don't wait. Yeah, uh, fail faster is what I always say. Exactly right. Fail faster. And, and, but, but in order to fail fast, yeah, just get out there and start failing. So yep. don't let the fear of failing stop you. Just get out there and start failing a bunch of times because you'll start, you know, the, the, old, phrase, the old phrase, you you don't fail, you either win or learn. Yeah. Right. So really, fail fast, learn fast is what I'm saying is get out there and start learning, learning by doing. So uh, don't wait. And in my case, maybe this will resonate with some other folks listening. In, in my case, I was like, oh, but what if? What if I launch a company that collects credit cards and now people accuse me of fraud? Or what if I get some chargebacks? Or what if I get a lawsuit? Or what if I get, you know, all this kind of fear, you know? Ah, yeah, don't. I remember. I remember those conversations we had in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Don't be afraid of that because, you know, looking back on it now, we get disputes all, all the time. We don't have an extraordinary number of them. You know, we get like the... 0.1% or, or yeah. whatever the, the normal industry standard is. You're going to have them. Yeah, exactly right. That's just part of doing business. So don't be afraid of all of these things. Just jump out there and do it. Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, the other one is don't be afraid to ask for the proper value in exchange for whatever it is you're providing. Yeah. So you're probably better than you think you are. You're probably smarter than you think you are. Your, prob your product or service or whatever it is that you're doing is probably more useful than you think it is. And so rather than say, oh, who's going to want to, you know, look, all I've got is words in a database. How useful is that? Or when you price it, I'm all, all I am are words in a database. Who's going to want to pay $10 for that, right? Right. Knock that off. Because if you've got something useful and valuable, your time or your service or your product or whatever it is, it deserves to be compensated for. Right. Yep. And so don't underestimate yourself. Don't underprice yourself. Don't, uh, you know, whatever it is. So the, the two big things I would remind myself of the future George going back to the past George or the future, whoever you are talking to the, the to the you today is uh, get out there and start making mistakes. Start failing. Just get out there. Just do it. Don't wait. Yep. Give it a try. If you fail, you haven't failed. You've learned. And if you win, congratulations, you've won. Just don't wait. Get out there. And then uh, don't don't be uh, don't be afraid to um, now. Don't be ridiculous. Don't say your time's worth a billion dollars an hour. Or right. Something, yeah. Right? yeah. But, but be fair to yourself. If you're going to provide a valuable service or a product or whatever it is you're doing to make the world a better place for whatever that means for you, then ask for fair compensation. And uh, those are the two things I would remind myself or wish I had told myself. Cool. Awesome. So the other thing, and both you and I know this so well, is that because everything's changing, technology is changing. I mean, just I like just in the last four years alone, I'm just amazed at like how easy it is to do stuff. Like where I used to get compensated quite well to help people put stuff together that now that's just drag and drop. Um, and it's like, 
but now there's new stuff to learn. There's, you know, AI and data science, stuff like that. Just always new stuff to learn. So how do you keep up with all the changes like in technology and just like all of that stuff? How do you keep up? <laughs> Great question. Uh, I think the answer there is exactly how I thought to do the thing I'm doing now in the first place. And that is, you know, back when I back when there was no merchant words, no keyword tool for sellers, no, uh, you know, how to understand the data that we're providing now. Back when there was none of that, I just thought, you know, like keeping my eyes open, but keeping my ears open, just like listening and understanding. It's, it's like I was saying that the guy in the, in the back of the meeting who's just silently taking notes and thinking, you know, something's going on in there. And that is basically just the real the simple answer is just paying attention, right? Yep. If I, I paid attention to the fact that I, I need to understand how people are searching in order to be a better seller. And I paid attention to the fact that Amazon's actually revealing to us sellers what people are searching for by simply observing what's coming down in the drop down, right? And so those two simple facts together is what I was just paying attention to. So really, it's, I had the dumb luck of paying attention. Although the next step, of course, is I actually did something about it. You know that old phrase people say, you know, somebody ought to dot, dot, dot. I, I both right. hate and love that phrase. Somebody ought to dot, dot, dot. Right. right well, yep. You're somebody. Sure. Somebody ought to figure out how a way to help sellers understand how people are shopping for products. But I'm somebody. So I'm going to go do that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so basically, it's, it's pay attention. Keep your eyes and ears open. Understand what's out there. And don't uh, you know, let, let go of your grip on uh, trying to hold on to the status quo. Uh, I'm sure that if uh, you know you talk to people who were blacksmiths a hundred years ago, right? Probably for the entirety of their lives a hundred years ago, being at the best blacksmith you possibly could be was a, a great career path. But there was a time where suddenly blacksmithery, uh, you know, was on the way out. Just, just don't hold on to what you. If, if you've done what you've always done, what's that phrase? Uh, quote: If you've if you've done what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always gotten. Right. Yep. Exactly. However, so when when the world is changing around you, don't fear it. Don't fight it embrace it and change with it. Because yeah. if you were a blacksmith before, you could take all those skills and do something amazing that isn't necessarily putting shoes on horses. It's using your skills to do something else. You're, you're smart, you're creative, you're problem solver. You know, you know how to, you were the best damn whatever it was back when we needed one of those things. Well, you can be the best damn whatever it is in the new thing that the world needs. Yeah. So when um, people use your tool, what would you say or the, the number of like, one, two, or three questions that people. So here's how I want to phrase this, right? So what are what are the top like two questions people ask around when, once they get the tool and they're kind of looking at it, what are the you know what's the first couple of questions they're going to ask? And then really, what I want to know is what should they be asking? Oh, interesting. Great question. Well, uh, let's start with what should they be asking. Uh, you know what I, what I what I, what I imagine is I think it's most useful to create a tool like a hammer or a wrench that has utility in a variety of different ways. Um, you know, I, I like to think, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you uh, follow it all, but Alton Brown is a great chef, a celebrity TV chef, and he's got a lot of cooking shows. You may have seen him mm -hmm. around. He, he calls kitchen, some kitchen gadgets unitaskers because they can only do one thing and he hates right. them. He prefers right. things that are more versatile and can do a lot of things. And, you know, I, I agree with that philosophy. And so when, when I collect some data or build a tool or have an interface or whatever, I like to think that it's flexible enough to perform many different kinds of useful tasks. And that really appeals to me. However, what I've seen is people come to a website or just maybe have a preconceived notion that they have a single problem they're trying to solve. And when I think about that, that actually makes sense because, uh, you know, there's that old business uh, school quote, people don't buy a quarter inch drill because they need a quarter inch drill. People buy a quarter inch drill because they need a quarter inch hole. Right. So people are always thinking about the problem they're trying to solve. And often as sellers, uh, we don't think about the same problem in the same way. So this is a, kind of like a, a, the, the, the different bits and pieces that roll around inside my head and say, on the one hand, I like to build tools that are flexible and useful and can satisfy a variety of tasks. But on the other hand, I understand that people have a particular problem that they're looking to solve. And these two things kind of seem at odds. 
You know, right. on the one hand, I want to build a hammer that you could use to build a hundred different kinds of structures. But on the other hand, people walk into this a Home Depot or whatever, and they say, I need a tool that accomplishes this one task. So that's kind of the fundamental yin and yang of uh, when I think about what customers ask us, what questions they have, how do I accomplish X? It's usually a, a very specific workflow. I just launched a product and I want to understand the best possible keywords for that product. Or I've had a product for ages and sales are kind of slumping and I want to do better than my competition. So what keywords are my competition winning on that I'm not winning on? So I can go understand that kind of like Venn diagram difference and then lean in on the places where I've got more opportunity to do a better job. And you know, they've got a very specific case in mind. And what I think is the best thing to build often is let's just build the generic keyword research tool. And then I find myself realizing, you know what? Customers got a specific need in mind. Let's make sure that we build our tools, the interface of our tools in such a way that you can easily satisfy that specific need. And we don't force people to kind of understand this multifaceted aspect. You know, we don't really want, I mean, it's on the one, I guess what I'm saying is the whole power and convenience, right? On the right. one hand, it's very powerful to have all that flexibility, but on the other hand, that requires you to think too much. Uh, final, final example before I shut up, and I know sometimes I like to ramble, but but no, my okay. final example is, uh, you know, here it is. We're in, uh, you know, we're in June. Uh, we just had a SpaceX launch that went up to the International Space Station. Right, uh, that was amazing. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, so in June of 2020, if you can remember, uh, you know, in these days, we had just for the longest time, uh, 10 or 10 years or so, uh, the space shuttle program had, had been come to an end and we had not returned. Uh, point is, uh, the United States now finally launched and it was a very exciting time. But what struck me about watching the, the SpaceX launch to return men to the International Space Station, you know, the astronauts there, what really struck me about that was if you look at uh, and, you know, Google for it or just recall it to your memory, the, the, if you think of the interface of the cockpit in the space shuttle, it was like littered with a thousand dials and bells and whistles and gauges and switches and toggles. And it's like overwhelmingly complex. But I'm sure once you understood how to use it, super powerful. Right, but right. that same power is wrapped into the SpaceX capsule, which is a beautiful, elegant UI. It's all touch screens. Mm -hmm. you know, it looks more like you're driving a car than flying a spaceship because it's this beautiful touch screen UI with scrolling maps and easy to navigate buttons and things. And I'm thinking, wow, that's a perfect example of this kind of like uh, dichotomy that I'm talking about. On the one hand, sellers or your customers or astronauts or whoever we're talking about have specific needs that they need. Workflows are going through, problems are trying to solve, they're very specific. And on the other hand, uh, uh, engineers typically build interfaces that are so powerful that they can be a little bit overwhelming. And mm -hmm. so uh, that's, that's the challenge that uh, the SpaceX uh, uh, dashboard or cockpit, I, I think is a great example of, is right. you, can, you can wrap all that flexibility and power into a beautiful interface that helps people not to worry about how complex it is, but gets them straight to the tasks they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, that's one of the things I really, I've really loved about um, Merchant Works. And it's been a little while since I've been in, in the interface, but it was always like, out of all the other tools I've seen in the past, where it's like, okay, what is this? Like if you go into like Google Analytics and you go into that interface and you get lost in there like really quick. Like I don't know how to make any sense of any of this stuff. But like with Merchant Words, it's like really easy. You just type in, type in what you need to type in as far as what product you're looking at. And then you get a really nice display of like meaningful data and then and an idea of which direction to go. <laughs> Thanks. And, you know, I, I'd like to say this because we're so smart in building amazing interfaces that we get it right the very first time. But <laughs> no, no, like you were saying, fail fast. Right. And so often what happens is we'll build an interface, we'll test it internally. And because we're all sellers, you know, uh, I still sell online and most of the employees in Merchant Words still are online sellers that will take a look at a tool we're building or even just designing, like we design the wireframes and before we even build the tool. But at any point along the development lifecycle, we'll look at it and say, you know what, guys, this is either we can improve the usability of this or we can improve the UI of this. Uh, and, and we realize that because we are ourselves customers of our own product. You know, we, we are sellers. And so we use the, the new features all the time as we're developing. And then the corollary to that is even though we think the uh, you know the, the internal uh, beta testers who have been improving into the design and the UI have uh, had our say it's not really until we launch it that we get great feedback from our customers and we're like you know what they're yep. absolutely right we, we tried our best to predict how customers were going to use our products and often we do a pretty good job but man we really learn understand we really understand and learn how to best build our products getting feedback from customers so that's really exciting to see
Yeah, so I really like how you said that because at Microsoft, we called it eating your own dog food, right? Yep. So you're utilizing what you're building and stuff like that. So it's awesome that you and everyone on your team are also uh, sellers on Amazon. So one of the things that a lot of people ask me is like, hey, Rich, I want to start a business on Amazon. And I'm like, cool. So what would you, so if somebody came to you on the street and goes, oh, you're George Lawrence. Hey, I want to start selling stuff on Amazon. What do I do? I mean, what do, what do you tell people? Well, first of all, I'd say, do it, man, do it, but be careful, <laughs> be careful what you wish for. <laughs> right. what, what, what I like to think of is, is this, is, uh, you know, I want to make sure that everybody has their expectations set accordingly, but let's say that you want to be a, a fly airplane, you want to be an airline pilot. Bravo, because that's awesome, right? You know, whenever we fly and we, we get to meet the pilot or see them come on with their stuff, I think it's really exciting career, blah, blah, blah. And I, in the back of my mind, maybe I always thought, wouldn't it be fun to be a pilot? But if, but if when I think about, what would it take to learn how to fly airplanes? Because you have to understand the aerodynamics and how the wings flap work and everything. Well, I don't necessarily have to commit a lifelong career of uh, understanding avionics and all that thing. I could just go buy a, like a remote controlled airplane and start fiddling the little dials and just get a taste, right? Now, that's not gonna help me be an airline pilot, but it gives me a taste. And then if I love that or realize that that's kind of for me, I can keep going. I can enroll in pilot school or whatever the next step is. And then I can take it. Yeah, you go. Exactly. And then I can do a deep dive and becoming an airline pilot and I can get more than a taste. Well, the same thing is true for Amazon. And that is if you're curious and want to taste, anybody can create a seller account and sell something. You don't have to jump in with both feet necessarily, just tip a toe in the water. And uh, you know what that might mean is you create a listing and get ready to sell a product, but you might not need, you might not have that product uh, you know, and your fingertips. And if somebody were to buy one of your products, you need to actually go get it from somewhere to turn around and sell it to that person. A lot of people are, you know, buy it from here and then sell it on Amazon, arbitrage the difference, that kind of thing. Yeah, retail arbitrage, yep. Yeah. Yep, but you don't necessarily have to do that because you're trying to make money doing it. You're doing it because you wanna experiment, dip your toe in the water, see if you like it, just get a taste. And then if that taste seems interesting to you, maybe scale up a little and scaling up could be start arbitraging at a bigger scale, right? Uh, find, sell a hundred of these and then go buy a hundred of them. And then, you know, however scale up or move beyond that is for you, uh, you might want to start white labeling products. You know, that's where you, contact a manufacturer somewhere, could be overseas, could be anywhere, and then ask that manufacturer to produce a product for you that you put your brand on, and now you develop the brand. You understand what's your brand differentiator, you know, by listening to how people are shopping and what's important right. to them, and then you come up with all of these products. Now, going from zero to that, that might seem a little bit overwhelming, but you don't have to go from zero to, you know, 10,000 all at once. You can just scale up a little by little as you understand. So my long-winded answer is I'd say jump in and get your feet wet. But if you want, dip a toe in the water first. If you like it, get a, get both of your feet wet. And if you really like it, then don't then jump in and start swimming a whole lot, right? So you can you can interact, you can dial up or down your relationship with, as an Amazon seller uh, to Amazon as big or as little as you want. But yes. Set people's so, expectations accordingly. If you're gonna, if you're gonna like uh, really jump in, you know, you're gonna need thousands of dollars to uh, uh, to to purchase and maintain inventory. You're gonna need thousands of dollars to do advertising, you know, because it costs money to make money on Amazon. Right. So I, I don't, don't want to make this sound like, sure, you can do it as a side hustle, but to really grow your business, you're gonna need to invest. But there's no reason to worry about that now because dip your toe, see how it goes, scale up later. I always like to think of it as like a. Um... A pool right so on one end you have the kiddie pool like where you like can walk in and on the other end you have the the diving end like the deep end and then the high dive right so and you haven't learned to swim yet but you have this idea that you want to swim and you get up to the pool it, like all of it is like daunting right but you know just dip, you know create that you know retail arbitrage is probably the easiest way to get in i think personally uh, what would you say is the easiest way to get into the Amazon ecosystem? Well, uh, you know, it, it sounds simple, but uh, you know, like, look, I, I could I could stand to lose a few pounds myself. So let me draw like a weight loss analogy. You know, what, what I typically try to do is I'm looking for this big, complicated answer. Like, well, I've learned if you take this particular kind of uh, acid with this oil and you mix it with here and then you inject yourself with it. No, no, no. Knock that off. Just uh, eat less and get outside and exercise a little more. You know, it's, it's real simple. But we always seem to maybe it's just a human problem. Right. right yeah. 
human nature is we're looking for like this complex answer to what we think is a complex problem, but no, no, Especially it's Especially engineers. Yeah, right, exactly, exactly. Just do the Google search for start selling on Amazon or whatever it is, and then I'm sure it's a URL like amazon.com sell with us, or at that bottom of every page on Amazon, I think there's a footer that says sell with us. And uh, it really takes nothing, literally nothing, to get started with an Amazon seller account. Uh, credit card and a few other bits of information from you, and then uh, off you go. You've created an Amazon seller account. Now just follow the, the, the instructions on Amazon on how to list a product. But remember, at any step along the way, don't stress you're going to get it wrong. In fact, I, I hope you get it wrong because that's how you learn. Right, You'll right. fix it and get it right the second time. Yeah. So if you list your, your first product and it's terrible, it's an awful listing, it never shows up in any search results anywhere on Amazon and nobody buys a single one, that's okay. You did it. You did more than most people who are still sitting on the couch. You did right. something. So yeah. Not just go out there and tweak your listing a little bit, improve your keywords, do whatever it is. You know, you'll get there. If you, yep. you, you start a PPC advertising campaign, you know, a pay-per-click advertising campaign on Amazon, you, you advertise against the wrong keywords and nobody's clicking on you, who, who cares? All you've done is you've gained a little experience. So in a way, you've, you've, you've learned something. You know, there's, yep. there's no fail. You either win or you learn. Yep. So, exactly. uh, so jump, jump in there and whatever that means for you, uh, create an Amazon seller account. It only takes a second. Uh, there's a, a few documents I think you have to scan or provide or a few pieces of information you have to fill out. It's, uh, you know, it's been ages since I've done it, but I've, I've helped people do it all the time. And I know it's very straightforward and simple. Jump in there and do it. Cool. Well, thank you, George. So um, how can people get um, in touch with you, get more information about Merchant Words? Great, great question. First of all, I love chatting with everybody because, you know, and I, I hate to say this, uh, oh, I was God. and still am exactly like probably you you are. There was a time where I didn't really know what selling an Amazon would be like. And then I just clicked the button, signed up and boom, I was an Amazon seller. Uh, and I'm, I'm still learning every single day and I still need help every single day. One of my favorite questions to ask people when I'm ever in a room or, uh, you know, giving a presentation in front of an audience, or whatever, as I say, how many people here think they uh, could use a little help to uh, increase the success of their Amazon business? Uh, you know, whatever that means, just get someone to answer your phone or right. Every hand goes up, every single hand goes up. And then I say, now watch this. How many people got some help from somebody along the way? And every single hand comes up, right? And then I say, now, how many people, now that you've achieved whatever level of success you've achieved, would be willing to help somebody out if somebody were to ask them for help? And uh, it's not 100%, but like 90% of the people throw their hand up and say, like, I'd be willing to help if anybody had a question. And I'm like, okay, everyone, look. Look at the guy next to you. You said you needed some help. The guy next to you said he'd be willing to help you. Turn and ask him a question, man. You just go do it. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, how do you get in touch with me? Uh, on every page at merchantwords.com, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a, it'll either be a chat button or a help button, uh, mm -hmm. depending if our chat agents are on by. If you got a question about anything, just jump in there and ask. We've got some fantastic chat agents, uh, you know, customer success folks will help you uh, answer any questions you've got or whatever. And then they can always escalate to anybody inside of Merchant Words you need some help with. You want to fire a question at me or our data science team or anyone about anything, they can 100% help you or point you to the right direction. If you want to reach me directly, uh, george at merchantwords.com is my email address. If I'm super busy and for whatever reason don't notice your email, uh, you know, someone on my team will notice that it's been a while since I answered and they'll jump in and figure it out. So uh, if you want to reach me directly, george at merchantwords.com just shoot me an email. I'd be thrilled to hear from you. Uh, and then if you need to get help right away, chat with our folks who are uh, online and ready to chat at any time. It's just a, a box at the bottom of every Merchant Words page. Awesome. Cool. And then if you want to get started with Merchant Words, somewhere around here, there should be a link um, that you can get started. And uh, yeah, so George, I just want you to know, I so appreciate you and how you have impacted, you know, thousands of people's lives by providing you know, a unique expression of your knowledge and making a tool that helps people be successful. And when you really think about how many people you've impacted is, is like, it's a lot, it's a lot. And you're, you're just one of the most genuine, nice, nicest people I've ever met. And um, so I just wanna say thank you for taking the time to have this chat with me and the small business community. And uh, any final parting words? Well, Rich, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, and, you know, when I started all this, it was not because I was trying to get rich or try to make money. That, that is not my major of success. Uh, all I wanted to do was help other sellers 
And by that measure, I think I've uh, accomplished some degree of success and I'm really, really happy about that. And so uh, th thanks for those kind words. They really mean a lot to me. And that's really all I set out to do was help other sellers. And, and I'm, I'm glad that we were able to accomplish that. So thanks again. And my, my parting shots is, uh, you know what? Uh, like I said, don't wait. Get out there and, uh, and and just start doing something. It might not be the right thing, but then you'll figure it out and you'll improve and you'll figure out what the right thing is later. Just jump in, uh, whether it's a toe or both feet, jump in and get started. You'll probably be pleasantly surprised with uh, it's going to be a lot easier than you think it is. So uh, uh, don't, don't forget to reach out for help. Me, your friends, anybody, uh, the, the whole world is willing to help people succeed. So if you need some help, just reach out and ask for it. And uh, Rich, again, thanks, buddy. It's been so great to catch up. And uh, it's, it's fantastic to be able to chat about this kind of stuff. Awesome. Thank you.